Hi everybody, it's Tim Constantine, and from Washington, D.C., this is the Capitol Hill Show. When you look at a map of the world, every country has staked out its territory. Every country has its own borders. If you want to enter India, or Turkey, or Great Britain, you need to get their approval, and you need to agree to abide by their laws. That may include a visa. It nearly always includes a clear indication of when you intend to leave. Even the most remote or challenged countries have restrictions on who can enter, when, for what purpose, and for how long. Then there's the United States. For reasons that are unclear, President Biden's administration has instructed U.S. Border Patrol not to enforce the letter of the law. Normally, visas are required if you're coming to America for work or to go to school or for medical reasons. The law says only those being persecuted in their home country are allowed to apply for asylum and stay permanently. In December of 2020, the last full month Donald Trump served as President of the United States, Customs and Border Protection recorded roughly 92,000 encounters nationwide with people trying to enter the United States illegally. Just three years later, in December of 2023, President Joe Biden saw four times that number. It's now estimated that as many as three million people will try to enter and stay in America this year illegally. Three million. For his part, Joe Biden claims there's nothing he can do. Is there more you can do? Absolutely not all I can do. Many, including both citizens and government officials, question Biden's sincerity. Congressman Mark Green is the chairman of the House of Representatives Homeland Security Committee. It's an absolute joke. I mean, he's done just the opposite of what he needs to do. What he's done is open to the border, told people to come, and mass waves of people have come. He hasn't done anything. Green isn't alone in wondering why Biden's policies seem to be catering to the desires of the Mexican drug cartel. The cartels saw with the open border an opportunity to make money. So everybody who passes through their territory has to pay them. And if you're in Mexico, maybe it costs you 10 grand. That's roughly the numbers that we're hearing. Central America, maybe 15 grand. If you're coming from China, it's 50 grand. Uh, if you're coming from Iran it's, 50, Iran, it's 50 grand. So they charge every single individual who goes through and is brought to the border. Bobby Kennedy, a lifelong Democrat and current presidential candidate, has similar worries. And they were coming on buses of 55 each that were operated by the drug cartels. And they were coming from Mexicali, where they're picked up at the airport and then brought to the U.S. border and passed. They pay the cartels $10,000 apiece. And we have a situation now because of the laxity of the, of the, uh, of the Biden administration's uh, response. The Mexican drug cartels are actually running U.S. immigration policy. We spent several days this past week in and around Eagle Pass, Texas, located right on the U.S.-Mexico border. We talked with law enforcement, with the Texas National Guard, with elected officials, and with average American citizens. Virtually all of them are concerned with the flow of humanity entering America through their little Texas town. So that is probably the best place to pick up the story. I'm standing in Shelby Park in Eagle Pass, Texas. And right over here on this side is the Rio Grande where people come across year round. Now, because it's February, the water is higher, the water is colder, it's moving right along. It's more dangerous than any other time of the year. In the summertime, you can practically walk right across without even touching the water. So what this little town of 28,000 people has is very desperate people who will bring themselves, who will bring their families, who will bring their children in hopes of a better life in the United States. You can't blame them for that. But the people in this town 
don't know who the literally thousands and thousands and thousands of strangers coming into their town every month are, and it scares them. What happens here is the Biden administration has said, we're not gonna enforce the rules. The United States has border rules, they're simply not enforcing them. And so the governor of Texas has said, that's enough. He called in the Texas National Guard, they put up this razor ribbon wire, and they are stopping people from coming in. Multiple because state Texas governors from all over America are supporting Governor Abbott. 13 showed up just in the time we were visiting. We could relinquish control of it tomorrow if Joe Biden were to step up and do exactly what we are doing here and stop people from crossing the border illegally. United States Senator Joni Ernst of Iowa, the state far away from the border, explains why it matters to those states as well. It's the housing issues, it's the education issues for their children, it's the fentanyl that is flowing freely over our southern border that's impacting every single community across the United States. Perhaps most importantly, the American people are concerned. Mike O'Neill joined a convoy that traveled from Virginia south to Florida and west to the Texas border to express his worry. We're losing our country. We are, we are losing our country. Yes, we need to take immigrants in, but it needs to happen legally. Jennifer, a Florida mom, brought her daughter with her in the convoy. She holds hope that the leaders in Washington can focus on the issue and get it fixed. They need to just put the border crisis in one bill and work on that, and, and that will work instead of trying to put their all their problems in together and jam it all through, that's not gonna work. They need to just put one thing together and work bipartisan together, and that will work. As it turns out, the United States Senate has forged a compromise bill, crafted after months of work between a Democrat senator, an independent senator, and a Republican senator, along with input from the White House. It's billed as a long-term answer to the problem on the border, but is it? Joining us to talk about illegal immigration, the issue, the president's policies, and the proposed fix, we have two-term United States Senator from the state of Texas, Senator Ted Cruz. Senator Ted Cruz, thanks for joining us on the Capitol Hill Show. Great to be with you, thanks. You know, the border and the lack of enforcement of the law on the border has become, other than the economy, probably the number one issue yep. on the mind of voters yep. in the United States. What is it that most people are concerned about? When we break it down and outline the issue, what's the worry? Listen, it's, it's the chaos, it's the risk to public safety, it's the risk of terrorism, and then it's the human suffering. Uh, what is unfolding at our southern border, this has never happened in our nation's history. And, and, and it's worth saying, if you haven't been down to the border, I know you have, but many people have not, if you haven't seen it with your own eyes, as bad as you think it is, I promise you it is a thousand times worse. One of the things I try to do, uh, I regularly bring senators down to the border. I, I spend a lot of time on the southern border and it's just, it's qualitatively different when you see how bad it's, it's gotten. I take senators out on midnight patrol with the border patrol and, and you go out on midnight patrol and, and you've done that. And as you know, you don't even have to go look for illegal aliens. They find you. They come and find you and they turn themselves in to the Border Patrol. And the reason they do that is when they do that, the Biden administration lets them stay. Asks, where do you want to go? Sends them to every city in America. And the result has been the worst illegal immigration in history. 9.6 million illegal immigrants since Joe Biden became president. You know, you talk about those numbers and Joe Biden just this past week, said to the media, I have done all I can do. <laughs> Has he? Uh, that is a brazen lie, even in the standards of Washington, even in the standards of Democrats, that is utterly brazen. Let's just review some quick facts. When Joe Biden became president, he inherited the lowest rate of illegal immigration in 45 years. He inherited success 
We had made incredible progress securing the border. And what did he do? Literally his first week in office, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris and congressional Democrats, they broke the border. And this was deliberate. It was not accidental. They did it on purpose. And it was three decisions that caused this crisis. Number one, in the first week in office, Biden halted all construction of the border wall. Number two, he reinstated the disastrous policy of catch and release. And number three, he pulled out of the incredibly successful Remain in Mexico agreement. Those three decisions caused this crisis. That is why we went from instantaneously the lowest rate of illegal immigration in 45 years to the highest rate ever recorded in our nation's history. Senator James Lankford, Republican. Senator Kristen Sinema, Independent. Senator Chris Murphy, Democrat, have spent months negotiating with one another and talking with the White House, trying to find common ground, trying to come up with some answers here. They've now put forth a bill for the United States Senate, and it proposes a limit of 5,000 illegal crossings a day. Uh, it proposes finishing the wall, although that isn't required until 2028. Uh, it does make more detention beds. It does funding for more agents on the border. Uh, it does more in the way of deportation flights. Is it a good bill or a bad bill and why? Look, it's a terrible bill. Um, it, it is a terrible bill and there's a reason it's a terrible bill. The Democrats do not want to secure the border. Remember, Joe Biden created this. And by the way, Joe Biden could solve the problem tomorrow. He has full power with no bill ever passing to solve this. How would he do it? He would reverse those three decisions. He'd build the wall, he'd end catch and release, and he'd reinstate remain in Mexico. And we would see the numbers plummet just like they did before. Joe Biden doesn't want to. And the problem with this bill is number one, it doesn't solve the problem. Number two, in many ways, it makes the problem worse because it codifies, it puts into law catch and release. Catch and release is against the law, but this bill would put it into the federal statute. Not only that, it normalizes 5,000 illegal immigrants a day. 5,000 illegal immigrants a day, that math works out to about 1.8 million a year. 1.8 million over three years, that's about 6 million. You basically have Republicans saying, hey, look, Biden had 9.6 million illegal immigrants. We're good with two thirds of that. That doesn't make any sense at all. That, that is, it's frankly ridiculous. And, and this bill, I gotta say, I understand why Chuck Schumer wants this bill. I understand why, why Joe Biden wants this bill. Because this bill, it's not gonna pass. Its chances of passing are zero. The Speaker of the House has said it's dead on arrival. House leadership has said it has no chance of passing, so they know it'll never become law. This is all about political camouflage. This is all about letting Democrats say, gosh, we wanted to secure the border, but you mean Republicans wouldn't let us. This is all about election campaigns by Democrats. And, and I think Republican leadership in the Senate made a, a colossal mistake going down this road. And I'll point out, I and a number of other conservatives were making this point at the outset. You were headed into a trap and, and Republican leadership just kept charging on ahead. It was really foolish. You mentioned how catch and release isn't legal anyway. Yeah. It does, it's not covered by the current law. Joe Biden and his administration are not following no. the existing law. No. So my question is, no matter what the Senate does, do you think the administration is automatically going to follow whatever the new law would be? Look, that's a big question and it's a very real question. I do think the Senate could do something very significant. So the House has passed H.R. 2. H.R. 2 is tough, serious border legislation that would make securing the border on the terms of the law mandatory. In the Senate, I've introduced H.R. 2. I'm the author of H.R. 2 in the Senate. You want to actually do a deal that does something? Pass H.R. 2. H.R. 2 would put into law mandatory requirements on the president. Now he could still defy them, but it, but it makes it much harder with, with the strength and language of HR2. And, and you know what Chuck Schumer said when, when I and others said, all right, you want a supplemental bill? Attach HR2 and we'll support it. Schumer said, well, no, no, of course not, because that actually would fix the problem. The Democrats don't want to fix the problem. You know, I, I, I get accused of being too simple sometimes, <laughs> but I've got a really simple question, and that is the bill as proposed this week says there would be a daily limit of 
thousand illegal immigrants every day. Why is that number not zero? In a sane world, it would be. And, and this is the answer that was given by the Republican negotiator, negotiators was, well, that's what the Democrats insisted upon. And listen, if that's what they insist upon, you don't have to agree with their lawlessness. Let's shift gears just a little bit. Fentanyl. Yeah. Killer drug. Yes. Gotten to be a bigger and bigger yeah. and bigger problem. What role does the border policy play in the spread of fentanyl all over the United States? So it plays a massive role. The cartels that are smuggling in people are also the same cartels that are smuggling in drugs. And their revenue, they get revenue from drugs, they get revenue from people. And both of them have become unbelievably pro profitable. Under Joe Biden, we have a wide open border. The cartels have complete control over the border. They cross uh, at will. And, and what has happened on, on dr drug overdoses, you know, last year we had more than 100,000 drug overdoses. That is the highest level of drug overdoses in our nation's history. To, to, to put that in context, that is nearly double the total number of Americans who were killed in the entirety of the Vietnam War. Just over 60,000 Americans died in Vietnam. Last year, over 100,000 Americans died of drug overdoses, and 70% of that was from Chinese fentanyl flooding across our southern border. When Joe Biden opened up the southern border, and he did it for politics, for partisan political reasons, he made the decision that, that would sacrifice the lives of those 100,000 people, and tragically, another 100,000 next year, and another 100,000 the year after that. This is what is happening at the border, I, I think, is unmitigated evil. We are seeing people dying. We're seeing people brutalized. We're seeing children and women violently sexually assaulted. And the Democrats are more than willing to look the other way at that and allow that to continue to happen, all because they look at those 9.6 million illegal immigrants and they see future Democrat votes. And so if people have to die and suffer in order for them to gain political power, they're willing to make that trade. You're a Texan. Yeah. Your governor, Abbott, said he's had enough. He's called up the Texas National Guard and he is now protecting the people of Texas, the borders of Texas, with his own people because the federal government won't do it. Your thoughts on his actions? Look, I'm very proud of the state of Texas. Texas is standing up and leading and fighting and we're trying to do everything we can to secure the border. You know, it's interesting. We've seen, we've seen the incredible hypocrisy of Democrats as blue state governors and blue state mayors have freaked out at the illegal immigrants coming to their states, whether it is the governor of Massachusetts or the governor of New York or the mayor of Washington, D.C. or the mayor of Chicago or the mayor of L.A. or the mayor of New York City. Eric Adams, a liberal Democrat, has said that illegal immigration is a crisis and he said it's destroying New York City. That's 110,000 he says are destroying New York City. Well, I agree with him. But if 110,000 are destroying New York City, what the hell do you think 9.6 million are doing to Texas and the rest of the southern border? And so Governor Abbott is a very good friend of mine. I've worked side by side with him for years. Texas is leading the fight to secure the border. And amazingly enough, the Biden administration, are they helping Texas? Are they working to fulfill the federal government's responsibility to protect this nation? No. The Biden administration is siding with the human trafficking cartels and the drug cartels and is literally going down there trying to cut down the razor wire that Texas is putting up to secure our border. It is clear the Democrats, when given a choice, they stand with the criminals and not American citizens. And, and, and that, that is truly through the looking glass. You're a Texan, but you're also a U.S. Senator. Yeah. You have a unique opportunity to sit down with people and hear their story. Surely you have heard from families, from individuals that are impacted yes. by all of this. I have. I've, I've sat down with, with many Texans. You know, when I go down to the border, one of the things I've done, I sit down with Texas farmers and ranchers, and, and they show me photograph after photograph of dead bodies they see they find on their farms, on their ranches. Last time Alejandro Mayorkas testified in front of the Senate Judiciary Committee, I asked him, I said, Mr. Secretary, how many migrants died last year crossing illegally into this country? He said, I have, I have no idea, I don't know. I said, of course you don't. 
your own agency's number, the number is 853. That is, almost three a day are dying, crossing into this country. I've seen elderly people dead, pregnant women dead, infants and toddlers, because the human traffickers, they don't care about these people. They abandon them to die. When I brought 19 senators down to the border, we went out on, on boats on the Rio Grande River. As we were out on boats, we saw a dead body floating in the river. We saw a man who had drowned, presumably that day, floating face down in the river. The death toll keeps going up and up and up. I've looked in the eyes of children, of little children, who've been horribly brutalized, sexually assaulted, violently assaulted. I, I've looked in the eyes of women who've been repeatedly violently raped as they came into this country. I've seen the suffering that is resulting from this. Back to my simple question. This yeah. Does the President of the United States and his cabinet have the authority to simply pick and choose which laws they're going to follow? I, absolutely not. Under the Constitution, Article 2 of the Constitution, gives the, the president a responsibility to take care that the laws are faithfully executed. He is openly defying that. And as I said, he's doing it in a way our constitutional system was not meant to operate with a president who defies the law. If he doesn't like the law, if he decides he wants to grant amnesty, if he decides he wants to let in 10 million immigrants, there's a way to do that which is you pass legislation, you change the federal law, you sign it into law, you know, it's, it's, it's back, uh, you know, schoolhouse rock. You know you, you, you know, you remember how a bill becomes a law? Apparently, Joe Biden didn't watch that because instead of doing that, he simply says, law, what law? And, and by the way, part of their strategy is lying. So Corrine Jean-Pierre, the White House press secretary, listen, White House press secretaries always spin. That's, that's part of the job. There has never been a press secretary who so brazenly lies day in and day out. She stood at that, at that press podium and she said, people aren't just walking across the border. It's simply not happening. That is such an astonishing lie. I'm actually surprised the reporters didn't scoot back because they were afraid lightning was going to strike her right there and then. I responded, as you know, I do a podcast every week, three days a week, called Verdict with Ted Cruz. I responded to my podcast. I said, Kareem. You're lying, you know you're lying. The president who employs you knows you're lying to the American people. I said, I'll tell you what, come with me to the border, pick any day, bring the White House press corps with us. We'll go out on midnight patrol. And I guarantee you within one hour, we will encounter groups of illegal immigrants doing what you claim isn't happening. Why is it that she lies? Why is it that Biden lies about this? Because the corporate media is complicit in keeping it quiet. If you watch CNN, if you watch MSNBC, there is no border crisis. And, and so I actually think the world of journalism has been corrupted and it, it is playing an important causal part in the crisis that is unfolding. Final question and that's, you know, it's always easy to criticize. It's very easy to spot what's wrong in the world. The tough part is what's right. Texas is your home state. It's yes. impacted maybe more than any other state by this issue. What's the answer? The bill that has come forward this week isn't it? What is the answer? In terms of legislation, the right answer would be passing HR2, which I've introduced. That, that would dramatically strengthen the immigration laws. The Democrats won't agree to it because they don't want to secure the border. So. If they won't agree to it, the answer is win in November. The answer is we've got to beat Joe Biden and get him out of the White House. We need a Republican president. Donald Trump, I will work hand in hand with Donald Trump and we will secure the border. And Tim, the reason I'm so confident about it is because we did it before. We did it before, it worked and we'll do it again, but it will not work, I believe, as long as you have a president like Joe Biden who wants this invasion, who doesn't care about the people who are suffering. And, and you know, the immigrants come in owing thousands of dollars. You get teenage boys that are sent to every city in America who owe the immigrant, who owe the cartels thousands of dollars. They have to pay it back or else the cartels will murder their families back home. And so what are they doing? Those teenage boys are criminals working for the cartels, they're robbing cars, they're mugging people on the street, they're assaulting people. I, my guess is those six guys that assaulted the police officers in New York are working for the cartels. They're committing crimes of violence 
in every city in America, and as bad as the boys have it, the girls have it worse. There are thousands upon thousands of girls right now trapped in sex slavery, teenage girls in forced prostitution to pay off their debt to the cartels. One agent estimated for me that it takes between five and eight years for a girl to pay off what she owes the cartels in those five to eight years. She works in sex slavery. Tim, I look at those wristbands. Those are modern day leg irons. And Joe Biden and Kamala Harris and the Democrats, they do not care that they are allowing, they are facilitating modern day slavery. This is evil. Senator Ted Cruz, thank you, my friend. Always a pleasure.